Hey, it's Jared with Stata Tech, and I wanted to talk to you today about the data plan that I use on my iPad. So I have the iPad Pro here from 2018, and I have the LTE version of the iPad. And I've always bought the LTE version of the iPad, even though I don't necessarily know why. I think that I'm always wanting to have connectivity to the iPad, and at times I'm okay paying the extra connection fee, but other times I look at my bill and I'm like, why am I paying that extra connectivity fee for the iPad? Well, about four or five months ago, I guess, maybe even a little bit longer, I switched over to Google Fi, and now I don't have to pay a connectivity fee for the iPad. Uh, I only pay for the data that I use. So Google Fi is a data provider that Google started, hence the name Google Fi, and uh, I primarily wanted to test it because I had the Google Pixel, and with the Google Pixel, uh, Google Fi works really well. You don't even have to put a SIM card in, just super easy connection, and I wasn't going to use much data on that Google Pixel anyways, so I didn't want to pay the $35 that I would have to pay to add it to my AT&T plan. Now, I've really liked having Google Fi on the Pixel. Um, Google Fi essentially uses uh, T-Mobile's towers, but it also, if you're using a Google device, a supported Google device, it also connects to Sprint and U.S. cellular towers as well, which means that if T-Mobile signal isn't very strong somewhere and Sprint is, it will switch over to Sprint uh, and also U.S. cellular if U.S. cellular is the, the better supported uh, or the better signal in that area. And that, of course, only works on Google devices. But if you're on a non-Google device, like, say, a Samsung phone or an iPhone or an iPad or something like that, you're going to get essentially the same signal strength that you would as if you were using T-Mobile. And so whether you're used to AT&T or Verizon or T-Mobile, um, you know, you're, you're going to get good signal. I've had no problem. And we've been traveling for uh, a month and a half in our travel trailer all over the western states of the U.S., California, Nevada, Idaho, Montana, Washington, um, Oregon on the way back, and then back down into California. And I've, we've never been anywhere where I've had signal on an AT&T device and no signal on a device u utilizing the Google Fi. So with that said, on the iPad, like I, I sometimes I do use data on the iPad, but most of the time I'm somewhere where I'm connected to Wi-Fi. And so it's only those rare instances when I'm not that I like having a connection on the iPad. I just hate having to pay for it every single month. So the unique thing about Google Fi, though, is if you have Google Fi on one of your phones, you can also add a data-only device for no additional cost. So this is where I got a little bit excited and decided to give Google Fi a try on the iPad. Now, I have my iPhone on AT&T because I'm utilizing the dual SIM functionality on the iPhone. I have a primary line, which is my regular cell phone, and then I have a secondary line, which is my business line on the iPhone, and I just, I'm still just using the iPhone on AT&T. But I have that Google Pixel on Google Fi, and I get that free device add-on uh, for data only, so I added my iPad on there. And I've actually considered switching over my, my AT&T accounts over to Google Fi because my usage, I think I would actually save a little bit of money in the long run uh, by actually just being on Google Fi. Now I'm going to put a link down below to the Google Fi uh, calculator uh, because the Google Fi calculator will help you determine whether or not you would save money switching over to Google Fi. Google Fi does things a little bit differently in the sense where instead of paying a large fee and getting unlimited data, you pay a smaller fee and you pay for your data up to the point where it becomes unlimited. So for example, if you have one device, you're gonna pay a fee to connect that device to Google Fi, and then you're gonna pay per gigabyte until you reach the cutoff for unlimited. And the cutoff for unlimited is six gigabytes for a single device. So you're only paying uh, a, about a maximum of $80 for that single plan and you'll have unlimited there in that in that instance. Now, if you're maxing that out every single month, chances are it might be a little bit cheaper for you to stay on AT&T or T-Mobile or Verizon or whatever your cell carrier is. But where it starts to become cheaper is when you add on your additional device. 
Now I know that on my AT&T plan, when I add on an additional device, depending on what that device is, it could cost me anywhere between $10 and $35 additional. I know for an iPad, it's $25 additional to add on the iPad. And I know that on most months, I don't use $25 worth of additional data on the iPad because the iPad is something that I just utilize uh, when I just want something small. And a lot of times there is Wi-Fi there for me. But it would save me money on Google Fi because on Google Fi, I would have that maximum bill of $80 a month even if I went and used up all the data that I could. But I'm also connecting my iPad to that. So I'm saving $20. So you might as well make that $60. And then I'm utilizing the same data pool that my other device is, is utilizing. And like I said, I'm not actually using much data at all on that plan. So I never really end up paying more than around $60 for my Google Fi plan. And that's with two phones because I have my mom on my Google Fi plan as well because she utilizes next to no data every month. So just the single connection fee is all that I have to pay for her. So I'm saving money by having her on Google Fi as opposed to my AT&T plan. And I'm definitely saving money by having the iPad connected there as well. So I can't really think of too many instances where a standard AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile plan would save you much money connecting more than one device. Google Fi seems to really be a good fit there, uh, unless you have a lot of devices that are utilizing a lot of data. The only reason that I haven't switched my AT&T phones over yet is because I have both my AT&T line, my business line, and my wife on a plan, and it just it works right now, and I haven't switched it over to Google Fi. I think that Google Fi as a, a service is a little bit better for, of course, Android phones, especially Google Android phones that support Google Fi completely. But if you live in an area where T-Mobile is really good and everybody around you there, uh, that has T-Mobile has no problems, then switching over to Google Fi essentially is not going to be a problem at all. And it doesn't matter whether you're using an iPhone or an Android phone or an iPad or even an Android tablet, Google Fi is going to work really good in those areas. So like I said, there's that link in the description below to check out the Google Fi calculator to see whether or not you would save any money. And the Google Fi calculator calculator doesn't take into account adding on a data only device and the savings that you'd have there. So make sure to take that into account when you're kind of looking at the cost comparison as to whether or not there'd be any savings. But if you use that link down below, you'll actually get $20 off your first bill, which pays for your the connection fee for your first device. So that essentially means that all you're gonna have to do is pay for the data that you used. So if you already have a device, it's really easy to go and sign up. Google will send you a SIM card in the mail that will work for uh, any of your devices. Um, you just pop that SIM card in, download the Google Fi app, and get the setup going, it's really easy. And of course, if you wanna connect an iPad, you'll have to go into your Google Fi account and go and add that data only device and then they will send you a Google Fi SIM in the mail that you pop right in to your LTE iPad and you're good to go. So like I said, I've been using Google Fi LTE for about six months on the iPad and it's been absolutely great. It saved me a ton of money because I don't use a ton of data on my iPad. And so switching over to Google Fi has saved me a lot of money there. So I just wanted to share that with all of you because as I've been on this trip for the last uh, month and a half with my family, people have been asking me questions about what I'm using for connecting my different devices and stuff like that. And I keep responding with Google Fi and people say on your iPad and I say yes. And I'm not even paying anything if I don't use any data on the iPad, which is even better. Keep those costs down. So let me know what you think down in the comment section. If you have any questions about how it performs, what you know the differences are, or maybe there's something that I didn't cover in this video, definitely feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer those questions. And make sure to subscribe to the channel here on State of Tech because it's these type of videos, these tech videos, these conversations that I like to have uh, to answer some of those questions and just put them out there for the rest of you who might be asking the same questions that I've been asking in the past. So subscribe to the channel so you get updates and we'll see you back here soon. Take care.